Um, I'm Heather Hall and this is my husband Michael Hall and um, we have been here at Rivermont since um, 1999. Um, we came back to Lynchburg after being um, away for a couple years and uh, visited a few churches in the area um, but pretty quickly felt like the Lord was calling us to be here um, at Rivermont. With everyone the last two years have been hard, obviously because of COVID. And, you know, you add to that just the normal life changes and unexpected circumstances that we, you know, we can't control. And um, pre-COVID, we had been um, involved in um, a small group. It started years ago when all of our kids were little and there were a lot of couples in um, little kids survival stage together. And it was a great, it was a really great group. Um, that was such a huge support and a huge blessing um, and a huge part of us being part of this body. And then as our kids got older, um, we, um, you know, for the normal kind of change of stage that happens as your kids get older and your kids are doing different activities, um, the group started to kind of drift apart. And uh, we left the group about a year and a half before, I guess, the COVID quarantine happened. Um, and maybe it felt like we were supposed to leave the group and um, and just do some different things and go in a different direction. And um, it was really the Lord used COVID to remind us of how much we needed those relationships. And um, along with, you know, everything in the world coming to a screeching halt in the spring and summer of 2020, um, it was a lot, it was a good time to really reflect on you know, what really mattered in life, what relationships really mattered and what God had given us and um, where we needed to invest our time. And so um, the Lord brought us back into our um, small group. And, and, and those relationships, I think, uh, as hard as that was, that whole period was difficult. And there were some really specific things that, that people in our small group, um, us included, were going through in that time. And just having the, the blessing of the church right there like praying for each other and loving on each other and sending text messages with you know um, messages of encouragement it was just such a blessing to us and I think um, you know I think uh, our time at Rivermont has been uh, really marked by uh, those kind of close relationships that have come out of that of that small group yeah I feel like the Lord has used the people in the Lord has used the people at Rivermont um, to really remind me both the people cheering me on have pointed me to Christ and the people who have asked me hard questions have pointed me back to what does the word say? Who is Jesus? And I'm so grateful. I'm so grateful for the people who have been um, such a huge support and the people who have also asked some kind of tough questions or disagreed about things have been a real gift in my life the last couple of years. You know, for me, the first time I came to Rivermont was not when we came together in 1997. I had been at Rivermont, visited as a college student back in the early 90s. And uh, and at the time, Rivermont was very different than what I was used to worship-wise. It was a traditional form of worship. It was very different than what I'd grown, what I'd grown up in. And, uh, and I don't think I was spiritually in a place to really um, appreciate what God was doing here. And when we came back, it felt like within the first couple of weeks that we visited, we just had a really strong sense that this is where God wanted us. And I think the, the two things that really stood out to us were, number one is just how gospel-centered the, the preaching was. It was the, every single week the gospel was in the message. Um, there was, there was um, just, it doesn't matter if we were in the Old Testament, if we were in the Psalms, if we were, you know, Jesus was there and pr presented in the message. And, uh, and then the second thing I think was just the beauty of the worship and, and just uh, even the Lord's prayer, just being reminded that we are worshiping, not just in this local body and not just with a body of believers uh, across the world that are living now, but across all the saints, across all of time. Mm -hmm. And, and so the idea of us joining our voices in worship with the people who'd come before us in this congregation and going all the way back to the early church martyrs was just uh, it was incredibly, incredibly powerful and meaningful for us, and and it's never lost that that uh, it's never lost that effect on us. I think every Sunday when we come, uh, we're just reminded of we serve a God who's been faithful 
from not you know from generation to generation going all the way back to 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 you know acts chapter three basically yeah. so yeah yeah. yeah yeah and i love the um the other part of the liturgy that i love is that every sunday um we say a prayer of confession and in the women's bible study we're going through a series on prayer and one of the really neat things we learned just this week was that we don't pray the prayer of confession on sundays because we need to be made right with God again, right? He makes us right through Jesus one time, right? He justifies us once and for all, but that we pray the prayer of confession every Sunday so that we acknowledge our need for him and we call our sin what it is. And then we get the reminder when the pastor stands up and says, and your sins are forgiven and we're in restored relationship. And it's about having that relationship with Jesus restored. And we get that reminder every Sunday. And that's, that's amazing. Yeah, it's really sure. amazing.